All right, guys. It is a hot, sticky summer day here in uh, the collapse of global industrial civilization here at, where are we? We are at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York on a muggy, hot summer day. But good Lord, when I compare Ithaca, New York to the rest of the country, Coming up over the next few days, I am not going to complain about the heat and humidity where I am as the summer of 2020 kicks into high gear in some horrific heat wave building. So if any of you want to get away from the heat, come on and see us at Bugs in a Jar Farm. And Say hello to my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, and I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. No, I haven't been around much because I have been too busy uh, in my little bivouac to survive the collapse up here. And, uh, but since it is now Friday, that would be Friday, where are we? July 10th, 2020. I'm going to take a few minutes out of sighting my my house to uh, check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to see how this collapsing planet has been, what do we say, rushing headlong into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour with or without help from the corona panic. And this will be, as it is every week at Mongabay, a mixed bag of Corona Panic Chronicles and Meets Collapse Chronicles. So we're going just to dive right into it, and I'm only going to probably just hit about half the stories on here. So where do we want to start today? Get my old man glasses and focus here. All right. So how much did the World Bank pump into factory farming in the last decade? How about $1.8 billion? Over the past 10 years, the World Bank's private investment arm has sunk more than $1.8 billion into major livestock and factory farming companies around the world of that. $686 million went to those factory farm dairy corporations. We have $563 million for pork and $353 million for poultry production. Yes, while the IFC says the investments create jobs and reduce poverty, critics contend they harm the environment and concentrate profits into the hands of a small few. Do you think so? The World Bank investments come amid calls to reduce meat and dairy consumption to help tackle climate change and deforestation. And of course, all of this is just another way of saying this is a story about the banksters behind it all. That is a perfect illustration of all of these planet-eating corporations. And I want to, in full disclosure, I have taken full advantage of factory-farmed pigs, chicken, and dairy cows uh, over the last 10 years, and I would have to say over the last two hours since my lunch I just had had factory-farmed pork factory farmed eggs and factory farmed dairy all fresh in my belly. Okay, what is going on with gold miners in the Amazon? Good luck on this. Brazilian court orders 20,000 gold miners removed from Yana Mami Park. Yes, the Yanomami Park covers 37,000 square miles 
uh, the Brazilian Amazon inhabited by 27,000 indigenous where soaring gold prices have resulted in a massive ongoing invasion of the indigenous territory by gold miners yes who are well supported with monetary backing heavy equipment and even aircraft so on july 3rd a judge issued an emergency ruling ordering the bozo nero administration to come up with an immediate plan yes including the removal of all 20,000 invading miners within 10 days, meaning three days from now. Yes. Um, anyway, good luck on that. What is going on with the, what was that little uh, fish's name that caused all of that assault on coral reefs? Nemo. This is the update on Finding Nemo. I guess his name was Nemo. Gray areas and weak policies mar the lucrative Asian trade in live reef fish. Yes, you will not believe that high demand for wild-caught reef fish from Southeast Asia uh, to stock, well, I thought this was talking about the aquarium trade, but they're talking about upscale restaurants in East Asia could be driving overfishing and depletion of fish stocks. Yes. Um, so to ease the strain on wild fish, populations, countries started adopting fish farming practices in which they raise uh, you know, fish in pens, a practice that is far from sustainable. Uh-huh. Good luck. Uh, let's see. From declining reef fish all right, well, we have some good news, I guess, if you're looking for lemonade to be made from the lemons of Brazilian deforestation. The world's biggest trade deal is in trouble over European Union anger at Brazilian deforestation. The trade agreement between the European Union and Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, and Uruguay is the biggest trade treaty ever negotiated. Yes. Uh, but now, uh, looks like it's in trouble. Looks like old Bozo Nero is uh, causing, causing trouble with his planet eating. Yes. Brazil's Bozo Nero has so far been unmoved by all these objections. Yes, uh, as it continues pressing forward with plans to allow industrial mining and agribusiness intrusion into Amazon indigenous reserves and conservation areas. Do you think so? Okay, how is the corona panic? If there's anyone, I don't think there's anyone left on Collapse Chronicles still believing. What are you looking at up there, little dog? What's up there like that? Is it a bear? Is it a, is it a bear? Sorry. What's up there? What's up there like that? Yes, you can see how concerned Sancho Panza is on uh, how the corona panic is saving the planet. If there's anybody suffering. Okay, here is the latest. Corona panic lockdown participate, 
precipitates deforestation across Asia and South America. Increased logging activity has been reported from Brazil, Colombia, Cambodia, Indonesia, Nepal, and Madagascar since the start of the corona panic. Reduced monitoring by enforcement authorities and social upheaval have both been cited as reasons for the increase. Yes, environmental groups are concerned that the expected global economic recession resulting from the lockdowns will result in governments deregulating businesses leading to a less green recovery as a result. Do you think so as uh, the deep green myth continuing that uh, the collapse of the global industrial economy is going to be good for our fellow earthlings in the environment? Okay. Oh no, Shanti the elephant has died at Washington's National Zoo. R.I.P. Shanti. Alright, oh, what is going on in Madagascar? I, I don't know why, I guess it was beyond, right after Manga Bay went to press, uh, the IUCN. Yeah, released up released their latest updated uh, endangered species report. You know, just basically saying that our fellow Earthlings are, are toast, and 33 percent of lemurs are now ready to head into oblivion. And of course, with the Corona panic, with more and more uh, lemurs headed into the stew pot. Uh, you can expect that number to go up. So Manga Bay, they will probably be covering that latest bad news about uh, we have more endangered species on this planet, obviously, in the year 2020 than at any time in human history. But uh, we're particularly looking at tortoises as Madagascar Authorities sees 144 endangered radiated tortoises from poachers, the biggest tortoise traffering bust since 2018. Um, radiated tortoises are, you know, usually heading to the to the pet trade, but since you know what, because of the C word, most of the 144 critically endangered tortoises were targeted for their meat, otherwise known as heading into the stew pot, as Bill Gady has been predicting for years when there is an economic collapse. Obviously, the first in the stew pot is the tortoise. Uh, the tortoises will not be returned to the wild because trafficking, you know, for their meat has increased so much that conservation groups engaged in the rescue of tortoises have stopped releasing them back into the wild. I have never understood all of this releasing critically endangered species back into the wild where they just came from. At least they're using their brains and keeping them in, uh, you know, where they keep keeping them in tortoise refugees because if they take them and let them go, they're just going to end up back in the stew pot again. Yes. Experts warn of a likely increase in poaching, and I'm sure this is from tortoises to lemurs in Madagascar, as a result of the economic slump triggered by the corona panic. Yes. Uh, here is 
is just the latest dispute between some planet eaters and in indigenous groups in Indonesia. You can pretty much uh, every week uh, for the last 10 years, you can just, uh, you know, repeat this story. Uh, all right, I think we've heard about planet eaters versus indigenous people. Uh, okay, what is going on with the corona panic in Mexico? Hmm, rural communities involved in forest management and ecotourism across Mexico are reeling from the economic impact of the shutdowns sparked by the corona panic. Hmm, many of these communities run ecotourism projects for their income, but restrictions, you know, travel restrictions, have meant no more visitors and therefore no more income. Uh, what do you think uh, that means? Without assistance to stay afloat, community managers say they fear they will have to shut down their ecotourism initiatives, which is one of the main incentives for keeping their forest standing. And of course, the animals in the forest living as the animals in Mexico heading into the stew pot due to the economic lockdowns of the corona panic. Okay, wow. Indonesia identifies a rhino to capture for breeding, but will have to wait until at least next year. And I think we all know why they have to wait till next year. If you don't know why, the reason begins with the letter C. Okay. What is going on with that planet eater, the Brazilian, the hilariously uh, oxymoron term, the Brazilian Environment Minister Ricardo Salles, Salles. Uh, federal prosecutors in Brazil have filed a lawsuit seeking the dismissal of Brazil's Environment Minister Ricardo Salles alleging, quote, countless initiatives, you know, he started under the direction of Bozo Nero, that violate his duty to protect the environment. Since he took office at the start of 2019 under Bozo Nero, Salas has worked to weaken the country's main federal environmental uh, agencies he has appointed police officials to key roles in environmental supervisory agencies. Uh, staff report that a gag order has been in force uh, since he took office and that they now work in a climate of persecution and threats. Do you think so? Well, here is the knee slapper of uh, the week. Following that story, Brazil, Brazil bows to pressure from business and decrees 120-day Amazon fire ban. Yes, 38 transnational companies in the agricultural, industrial, mining and service sectors, yes, uh, have, uh, let's see, what, how do they, how do they word this? Uh, let's see, a 120 day Amazon fire ban. Uh, we will see 
the administration long resistant to all efforts to redirect its Amazon development and environmental policies responded today announcing a decree. Yes, Bozo Nero saving the planet. The Brazilian arm, army has been deployed to the region to guard against a replay of last year's wildfires. Uh, the letter came just weeks after 32 international financial institutions that managed four and a half trillion dollars in assets told Brazil that if it does not curb deforestation, they would stop investing in Brazil. The problem, say critics, is Bozo Nero has set new policies that greatly undermine socio-environmental safeguards. Yes, do you think so? So uh, it is good to know that all these planet eaters uh, are being so concerned. We will see what a 120 days, so let's call that July 1st, so July, August, September, October, we will see what the fire season in the Amazon looks like with their fire ban. For Bozo Nero to suggest a 120 day Amazon fire ban is like Sancho Panza uh, decreeing a 120 day ban on chasing chipmunks. Okay, we just started, uh, we, we had one story on tortoises. What is the bigger story? Turtles and tortoises in trouble. More than half of all turtle species now face extinction. More than half of the world's turtle and tortoise species are now threatened with extinction according to a new study published by a group of 51 experts loss of habitat, do you think so, is the biggest threat to turtles. Other threats include the pet trade, overconsumption for food and medicine, pollution, invasive species, and climate change. Yes. Um, Individuals can also help. One way is by keeping dogs under control in important turtle habitats. Of course, we are uh, bugs in a jar farm. I have never seen so many snapping turtles as I have seen around here. I can imagine if Sancho Panza threatens a snapping turtle who is going to win that argument. Uh, Wow. Do you remember Cecil the Lion? Do you believe it's been five years since Cecil the Lion was gunned down? Five years after the death of Cecil the Lion, trophy hunting debate rages on. Yes. Uh, same old, same old. You will not believe this that a new inv investigation hints at cronyism in uh, the awarding of Indonesian lobster export permits. Who would have ever thought uh, that you would find cronyism in the awarding of Indonesian lobster export permits? Uh, they do dig deep on Manga Bay. Uh, Okay, we're now looking at shrimp farming, taking out mangroves. Environmentalists have opposed plans to establish shrimp farms in uh, this Sri Lankan nature reserve. Uh, critics say the plan, you, you know, to open shrimp farming inside a nature reserve goes against the government's wider efforts to conserve mangroves. Yes, <clears throat> they also point to the failure of a similar project to establish 
uh, shrimp farms in a mangrove area, which resulted in 90% of the farms being abandoned. And the plan also threatens the hundreds of thousands of migratory birds that stop to feed in the area. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. I'm just skipping over a lot of these. Okay, here we go. So, Manga Bay and I, you know, we have been uh, bitching and moaning about palm oil. For how many years this has been one of the main things Manga Bay is talking about, and you never hear anything about coconut oil. Uh, so I continue, so I carefully look, and I'm, and I'm telling people that palm oil is not coconut oil. That coconut oil apparently is just fine. Well, it's time to uh, explode another myth here on Collapse Chronicles. <coughs> that coconut oil you love? Hmm. Species have gone extinct over it. A true story. A new study finds that coconut oil production, by some measures, is even more destructive than palm oil production. With coconut oil production affecting 20 threatened species per million liters of oil produced, <coughs> and palm oil only affecting 3.8 threatened species per million liters. Globally, coconut oil farms now occupy more than 12 million hectares, otherwise known as more than 30 million acres of land, about two-thirds the area of palm oil plantations, with most farms located in Indonesia and the Philippines. Yes, uh, the new study aims to demonstrate that most consumable oils, also including olive oil, soy, and rapeseed oil, all have negative impacts on the environment. Now, my guess is, and I, I'm just taking a, a, this is a hunch, that it is the palm oil companies come, you know, financing the study, uh, saying, and they're probably correct, you know, defending palm oil, that it's not because it's palm oil, it's, it's, it's any kind of oil grown, in, grown on a plant, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, it's going to, you know, it's going to be planet eating. There, there is no way to make vegetable oil, sustainable vegetable oil. All of this, uh, I'm always talking about, there's no such thing as sustainable palm oil. There is no such thing as sustainable oil that comes from anywhere. Oil is not sustainable. So if you think you're saving the planet with your coconut oil, Think again. Ah, oh, gee. The corona panic may worsen burning and haze as Indonesia enters the dry season. Reallocation of disaster preparedness funds for the corona panic could allow a flare up of more forest fires and haze as the dry season gets underway in Indonesia. Do you think so? Uh, it never ends. Um, anyway, another way that the corona panic is taking down the planet. Uh, hmm. 
Yes. Here is what to do with all of the unemployed elephants in Myanmar. There are 2,900 unemployed elephants in Myanmar right now. Uh, there you go. Private owners strapped for cash may be forced to kill their elephants. Yep, yep, yep. What's going on with songbirds? Trafficking of thousands of songbirds highlights rampant trade in Indonesia. Smugglers in Indonesia managed to ship more than 7,000 songbirds on commercial flights from Sumatra last month. Uh, then another shipment of 2,300 birds was uh, foiled but 800 of them were already dead. Wildlife watchers say up to 40,000 birds per month are trafficked out of the airport in Sumatra, likely with the help of corrupt officials. Yes. Do you think so? Here is how drug Trafficking could be put, putting fragile fisheries at risk. A new study finds that fishing vessels are increasingly being used to traffic drugs, tripling over the past eight years. Small-scale fishermen commonly get involved in the drug trade, possibly due to collapsing fish stocks. There you go. Uh, and you will not believe this, the corona panic may intensify the use of drug trafficking by small fishing vessels due to global economic stress. Right. Uh, many stories of this in uh, the mainstream media even uh, about hundreds of elephants die in Botswana's Okavango Delta as many as 400 elephants have now died in Botswana's Okavango Delta since March authorities say believe it or not poaching poison and anthrax have all been ruled out as the cause of death. Conservationists have questioned the government's handling of the mass deaths. Do you think so? Uh, Botswana has the largest elephant population of any country with the resultant rise in human-animal conflicts leading the government to rescind protections for the animals, but uh, I saved this one from Brazil for the two or three people on the planet still with me because this is, uh, th th this is just so classic. Th this, uh, this, this is Manga Bay. This is almost a parody on Manga Bay. <clears throat> Brazil could dynamite Amazon dolphin and turtle habitat for a new industrial waterway. Brazil plans to excavate and dredge millions of cubic materials of material, including the ecologically sensitive Lorencal rocks, to create an industrial shipping channel on the Tocantins River in the Brazilian Amazon. Yes. Uh, Sao Paulo based DTA Engineering plans to dump more than 5.6 million 
cubic meters of sand inside the river banks where Amazonian turtles now lay their eggs and the endangered river dolphin would also be impacted. Uh, last September, Brazil's environmental agency identified dozens of mistakes in the environmental impact study, which failed to list a dozen endangered species, ignored the specialized environment, and did not study turtles in the most affected areas. Do you think so? Uh, there you go. Dynamiting dolphin habitat in the Brazilian Amazon, but we're going to wind up there because uh, it looks like it is clouding up. We might be getting some rain and I got to get back out there behind my saw to keep sawing up this probably which was a beautiful white pine tree last week is now siding for my house here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So come see us and uh, if you enjoyed this depressing roundup of doom please give Manga Bay your thumbs up and feel free to uh, Feel free to subscribe to Collapse Chronicles when you're over here. Uh, I am so busy, guys. Uh, I will try to bring a couple of videos per week to distract you from the distraction. But uh, right now, I need to get back to work, get out there and enjoy it while you still can, and enjoy the heat wave heading your way. Bye, guys.